So welcome everybody. Um, I don't really know what inspired me to do this. I made a couple of tutorial videos a while back um, when I was learning how to code. Um, if, if you guys don't know, I taught myself how to code. I started coding about two years ago. Um, I learned most of what I know from a guy named Maltador, who's one of the devs here, but he's kind of semi-retired from coding. Uh, the restaurant sales script is one that he wrote completely um, himself. Um, so I started out watching some Java tutorials, J-E-V-A. I highly recommend those. Uh, they have some specific tutorials that they do about spawning peds and things like that. But that's how I kind of got into uh, 5M coding was watching Java and I highly recommend their videos. And then I made a server, my own server, um, Miscreant Mafia, and didn't really write any custom scripts for it. I was just uh, trying to learn how to do stuff and putting together a server. And in that process, I went through the same thing that most people that try to start a server do. I uh, realized I didn't know anything about what I was doing. And so I went to Fiverr and hired a couple of devs to write a couple of scripts for me. And I highly suggest you not ever do that because every single person that I've ever experienced on Fiverr is a scam artist and they will take your money and screw you. So I, I, about $200 into that, I realized that I was going to have to uh, bite the bullet and learn how to code. So I started uh, watching tutorials, reading everything I could find. And one of the things that I discovered during my uh, journey, I guess, was that I always wished I could ask a question. And there's some things that no matter how many tutorials you watch, you're never going to find the answer to. And specifically what I'm talking about is syncing. Um, syncing is a very difficult concept. Um, Snaily and I, over the last six months or so, have been doing a lot of stuff to figure out syncing. And I think we've got it pretty well figured out. So we're not going to talk about any of that tonight. That's pretty advanced stuff. But by the end of the lessons that I intend to do, weekly lessons, we're going to get all the way into syncing to make sure all the clients see the same thing whenever you have uh, server spawn peds and props and everything else. Because that's a that's a difficult task. And there I have never found any documentation or um, tutorials that show exactly how to do that. Uh, and that's one thing that I want to be sure that I teach here with this because it's a, I think it's a secret sauce that people keep close so that they don't ever have to share what they know and they can have scripts that nobody else can write. But when you get done with this class series, you'll be able to do that. So anyway, Maltador and Stanley and I built a server called uh, Simply RP. And it was a pretty, pretty fun server. We had a lot of custom scripts that the three of us wrote. And then we ended up, uh, they ended up selling the server to a guy that I won't, he's kind of, I'm not going to mention his name. Uh, we all hate him here pretty much. But anyway, he built a server called Playplex. Well, we built a server for him called Playplex. And it did pretty well. And then uh, he purchased another server, which we won't mention. And eventually we all realized that we couldn't work for the guy because he was a complete jerk. And so we all left. And Billy and Jay, uh, names and Jay, uh, had been learning how to code for me while we were working on that particular server. And when I left, they left, and we they were just hanging out. We were still writing scripts, and they were learning to code from me. Um, and one night, they were like, hey, we should start our own server. And I was like, I'll help you guys if you do. And so IRP was born, and uh, Billy and Jay knew absolutely nothing about coding uh, whenever they first started. And um, I, I didn't teach them everything they know, but I taught them a lot. And within about three months, uh, Jay really took to it well. And he was uh, troubleshooting and um, fixing scripts, and so was Billy. And then, But Jay was pretty gifted for it. And so within like six months, he was, he was writing his own custom scripts. So um, I do enjoy teaching people, and that's how we ended up here. Um, I like to share the knowledge, and I don't like doing bug fixes, so I figure the more devs I can train, the more people will be here fixing bugs, and I can just write custom scripts, which is my ultimate goal. So full full disclosure, I'm hoping you all become devs and come work here and, and fix all the broken stuff while I write new stuff. <laughs> so that's the, 
that's the deal. So anyway, um, we're going to start with the basics. And the very basic thing we're going to start with is how to use a VS Code. So let's do an intro to VS Code here. So first, let's talk about opening files. So I'm going to swap over to VS Code. And I'll actually go ahead and close this uh, close folder. So once you download and install VS Code, which I highly recommend, um, there's other there's other editors like Notepad++ and and um, I don't I don't even know what all editors are out there, but VS Code is free, and uh, I think it's fantastic. So uh, when you open up VS Code, the first thing you want to do is go to File Folder Open, and this is very basic stuff I know, but uh, it can be confusing whenever you're first getting into it. So I keep all the test server files. Um, you're going to have a folder. Let me back up for a second. I'm not going to teach you how to um, set up your own test server. There are a lot of tutorial videos out there. There's also really good documentation on 5M. When I release the video uh, tomorrow on YouTube, it'll have a link to a really good tutorial on how to set up a, a test server. And if you follow that, uh, tutorial, you'll be able to set up your own test server. So um, that's kind of the, uh, Grizz and I were talking about it last night. That's the prerequisite for the class. You have to be able to read documentation to set up your own server. If you um, get to a point where it's just not working and you can't figure it out, I'll, uh, I'll, I'll give you some assistance. But um, I'm not going to show how to set up a, a, a server in, in this tutorial. It's like I said, it's pretty straightforward if you follow the documentation and do exactly what it says. Don't try to take step any, skip any steps. So once you get your server installed, you're going to have a folder, a citizen folder, that's going to have some resources and stuff, and you're going to have um, that's in the server side. And then you're going to have a folder called txdata, most likely, and there's going to be a resources folder. And this is where all of the scripts that you install or that you write, um, all the scripts that run on the server are located in resources. Um, so I'm just going to open up the resources folder, and then you'll see all the scripts that we have on IRP uh, on the left here. So that's, that's how you open a file. So let me see what was next. I don't remember. Uh, next is navigating. Okay, so I'll explain all the windows here in VS Code. Um, again, if you've ever done any coding, this is all going to be very uh, uh, boring. But I, I just want to make sure everybody understands it. So th these bars on the left are things you can do. So extensions is one that um, is where you can download some snippets and things that will help you with your coding. Um, I'll talk about that again in a minute because I made a note on the slides for the ones I recommend. Um, Explorer is where you look at all the files that are in the folder you opened. Um, you can also open a, a, a folder within, so um, you don't have to open all of the scripts if you just want to work on one particular script. Um, you can go into resources and say go into KCE okay, custom scripts and open up the chicken script. If you do it that way, then you're just going to have the files that are within the folder. But since um, since when we're working on the server, we're all working on the GitHub. The reason I work in resources is because you see the .git file right there. That connects me inside of VS Code to the GitHub. I'm not going to talk about getting VS Code set up for GitHub um, tonight. Um, we'll probably do that in a more advanced class. Um, you do need to learn how to use GitHub. Um, is my recommendation if you're going to be doing dev work because that way if you have multiple devs working or whatever everybody has the same files all the time so once you are connected to github you can see your branches here i'm in the ksui dev training branch because i don't want to change anything on the main server or the test server um, this is just my little branch that i set up for for the classes so that's what this one is um, if you're looking for say there's a variable that you're looking for or an event like add money. You can just type a search there and it'll find add money and all the all this wherever it's at and all the scripts so you can find what you're looking for. Um, that's really handy. Um, this search function here is really handy. When you're inside a particular script, for example, we'll just pick one of them. Well, we'll just do QB target. <laughs> Mm -hmm. Do the 
dreamy. So you just hit Control F here, and you can search for like uh, information, and it'll highlight it, and you can navigate through here. So pretty basic stuff, pretty common with any other type of editor. Um, I have never used Go Run um, Terminal. I think that opens a PowerShell. I mean, basically what I use is this the Explorer, the GitHub, and down here I have this is a this is Copilot. That's a paid um, program you can get from uh, GitHub. Um, Copilot's really nice. It will autofill a lot of text whenever you're coding, and um, it looks at basically your repository that you're working in. And if you're doing repetitive tasks like setting up config files and stuff, it's a really good predictive text editor, and it'll it'll add stuff in for you. Um, and I find it to be uh, it's not 100% accurate, so you can't just start top, typing and it'll program it'll it'll do all the programming for you. But it will help you not have to remember all the variables and things like that. So um, you'll see that as we go along, as I start doing some coding, you'll see the text filling in using Copilot. Um, there's some free ones out there. Uh, Snaily, one of the other devs here, he uses a free one. I forget what it's called, um, but I highly recommend Copilot. I've been very happy with it. I've been using it for about a month and a half now, and uh, it's made my life much easier. So um, whenever you're navigating in VS Code, um, pretty much every script is going to have a config file. So let's look at one. Let's look at one of mine. Um, For example, gym shop. So there's going to be a config file, and whenever you're editing stuff in here, you're, you're, most of the work that you're going to do if you're using a purchase script or a script someone else wrote, it's just going to be changing the config provided the script actually works, which is not always the case whenever you buy a script. But um, there's some things that that are important whenever you're doing like these um, these tables like this. Um, if you middle click and highlight, it'll highlight multiple rows. So like if I wanted to change QB core to something else, I can highlight all those with a middle click. And that is, this is a trick that, that I don't remember where I learned, but it's pretty awesome. So you can, you know, you can highlight all, all those lines and you can change it to whatever you want. But um, of course I want it to say QB core because that's correct. Um, I am going to talk a little bit tonight about uh, config files and, and how they work, um, but we'll get to that later. Right now we're just going to we're just kind of doing an overview of VS Code. So let's see, what else? Um, oh, split screen, yeah. Let me show you how to do that. That's a good one too. So um, there's a couple of options. If you right-click up here, you can pin, because um, and it, it won't go away. So let me show you this. Um, I'll close that. So if I open the config, and then I click over on like a client file, you can see my, the one I was on went away. So pinning is very useful. You can pin that. Um, if I want to look at the config and my client script to make sure I have my references right, you can click open to the side. And so, and you can click this little explorer and that'll close that so that you've just got your code here. So then I can close this one. So I've got config on the left and I've got my script on the right, or you can do it either way you want. You can drag them over. And if you put them both together, they'll combine so that you have to click between the tabs. So again, like I said, basic stuff, but, uh, that the split screen and the pen were things that I, I didn't know for months whenever I first started cutting. And the middle click is a is a really key one that I didn't know before. So let's see. Okay, so yeah, I said I was gonna tell you about the extensions later. So these are the ones I recommend. Um, when you come to extensions, um, you can search for like 5M and it'll show you a whole bunch of uh, different ones. I recommend this one, the top one there. Um, 5m-lua, it gives you some snippets so that if you type in like say um, qbcore.functions. It'll start giving you some predictive stuff and if you click on the prediction that it gives you, it'll go ahead and populate all the variables. It, it runs off of the, um, the natives uh, for 5m, uh, which we'll talk about a little bit later. But that's the first one I recommend. The second one that I recommend is uh, just lua. Uh, is the top one again. Um, it'll help you if you have any syntax errors, it'll highlight them for you so that you know you don't have something entered correctly or you're missing a curly bracket or um, you're using a command that doesn't exist in Lua. It'll give you a warning. And then um, QB core is what all, is what we'll be working in for everything. 
this QB course snippets is a good extension as well. So I highly recommend that one. Uh, I already talked about Copilot. That's the uh, yeah. I've already done the brief GitHub discussion. So if you if you're not familiar with GitHub, um, basically it's a repository of of code. Um, I don't want to get too deep into it, but GitHub is can be complicated. It's very frustrating when you first start using it. Um, but the easiest way to use it is to get your VS code set up. We'll talk about that in a future class so that you can uh, access your GitHub right here. And then you can just, you can do all your pulls and everything from right here instead of using Git bash, which is very handy. So you can pull, you can push, you can clone repositories. Everything you can do in Git bash, you can do inside VS code. Once you get your, uh, the primary thing is you have to get your key or whatever, your identifier from uh, the GitHub website, and then you have to enter that information somewhere. I don't remember. I've had this set up for almost a year, so I'll have to go back and refresh myself to do a do a discussion on that. So anyway, um, GitHub, uh, get a user ID and learn how to use GitHub if you're going to try to dev. It's it's very handy. It keeps track of all your changes. So if you ever change something and screw your whole server up, you can revert back to a previous um, to a previous commit that you did. So you never lose anything. Everything you ever do will be tracked in GitHub. So it's highly recommended. 